welcome to velocity time graphs acceleration now just before we start just a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video okay so just to begin with i want to just have a look at what a velocity time graph uh, will look like and some key features of it um, so the first thing to note is it is a velocity time graph and therefore our y-axis here is speed and our x-axis is time. The graph is demonstrating the change in speed as time goes on. And what you will notice here is we have a curve shape. Now what that means is it, as it's not a straight line, it means we don't have a constant acceleration. The shape here is all about acceleration, change in speed. Now it starts off quite steep and then gets a little bit less steep and then a little bit less steep and a little bit less steep and a little bit less steep. Now all that means is that it is not um, accelerating at a constant rate. What it does mean though once we get to this section where the line starts to curve downwards this is actually showing us that we have deceleration. We have the, um, the whatever the item is getting less uh, less fast it is decelerating so the change in speed is negative now what we've been asked for here is the um, the average acceleration of the runner between zero and four seconds now if we are going to average out the acceleration well what we need to know is what was its uh, speed at the start and what was its speed at the end so from zero and four and what we want to do is we want to average out that acceleration. And what actually happens if we average the acceleration out is that we actually create a straight line. And so the acceleration comes from the little triangle formed in this space. And so what we are looking for is the change in speed divided by the change in time and if you look at this it looks very similar to our usual um, our usual gradient calculation and that is because that's exactly what we're trying to find we're trying to find the gradient of the line that we've just drawn and so the change in speed it's gone from zero to eight meters per second so that is a change of eight the change in time is four seconds and so the acceleration is 8 divided by 4, which is 2. And what we just need to be careful of here with our, um, with our units is speed was in metres per second. And so it will be metres per second, but then time is also in seconds. So it's actually metres per second per second. And we call that metres per second squared. And so acceleration is uh, measured in metres per second squared. Now, in the same situation, we're asked to estimate the acceleration of the runner at five seconds. Now, this is very important. It's at a single point in time. Now, if we have a look at this, we can read off that person's speed at five seconds. If we read across, that would be at nine metres per second. But at the moment, we can't register an acceleration. And so what we need to do is, like our previous question, where we found a gradient, we need a line which has we can work out a gradient from. And so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce our own line. Here's a line. And currently, it doesn't touch the graph. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it around and actually the way that I've drawn this is pretty uh, pretty good. All I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I move this around until it hits the point which I have marked and forms a tangent. Now, uh, for you, you'd be using your ruler to do this and all you need to do is keep moving that ruler around until it just touches the point that you have marked on your graph. And then comes the fact that it is an estimate. Now, everyone's line that is drawn in here will be slightly different. And so all you need to do is make sure that when you are making your estimate, you can make it as large of a triangle as possible. So I'm going to use this point here and join it up. There we go. So I have a triangle so that now I can measure the change in speed and the change in time. 
So for me, the change in speed has gone from five meters per second up to, and this case is going to be 10.6. So for me, my change is 5.6 meters per second. The change in time is seven seconds. And so if I was to uh, estimate the acceleration, well, that's going to be the change in speed, which is 5.6, divided by the change in time, which is 7. And so that is 0 0.8 metres per second squared. Now, what we've actually done here, this is called an instantaneous rate of change. So we are trying to find a rate of change at an instant at a single point and so if you are ever asked to do that you need to create a tangent to the curve and work out the gradient of that tangent so our third question here is that um, we want to estimate the acceleration of the runner at nine seconds now again this is an instantaneous rate of change because it's at a specific instant of nine seconds and so we're going to mark that on the graph there is nine seconds but this time we just need to again form ourselves a gradient and so we just need to draw ourselves a line and there we go that's actually again once again our line is just touching the curve at the point that we have marked and therefore that will be a good enough tangent to our line and all we then need to do is we need to form that triangle in order to form a Form an, uh, form an estimate of the gradient and so I'm going to use this point here and this point here just to try to make my triangle as big as possible and then in terms of finding um, finding the differences so the change in my time that's one second two second three seconds four point six seconds um, in this case so 4.6 seconds and the change in speed well I've got um, that is 2 meters per second 2.8 3.4 meters per second change and then I'm going to estim estimate the acceleration so I'm going to do 3.4 divided by 4.6 and if we just type that into a calculator 3.4 divided by 4.6 equals 0 0.739 meters per second squared but I'm missing a very key point here this line is actually negative and that is because the change in speed is negative and therefore this value is negative and it means that our acceleration is also negative so a negative acceleration is also the same as a deceleration and the final question about this graph state, uh, asks at what time was the runner's acceleration zero meters per second squared now what would zero uh, meters per second squared look like as an acceleration well 0, point, uh, 0 meters per second squared as an acceleration would actually be a flat line and so what we are looking for is where on this graph would this flat line be a tangent to the curve and if we look the point where that is a tangent is right here it is at seven seconds so it's seven seconds into the, uh, seven seconds into the journey the acceleration was zero now what does this mean about the runner well what this actually means is this is the point where the runner actually stops accelerating they have stopped accelerating because we were accelerating all the way along as our curve was a positive gradient and then we hit a flat line beyond that point we are going to start decelerating and so when we have a flat line or a turning point of a curve it means we are moving from acceleration to deceleration and it means we have actually um, we are still moving but we are now going to start decelerating
And so then we look at the exam question and it came from the Edexcel specimen papers and it was on higher paper two. And it says that the graph shows information about the velocity V meters per second of a parachutist T seconds after leaving a plane. And it wants us to work out an estimate for the acceleration of the parachutist at T equals six. So again, this is an instantaneous rate of change. We want to know the acceleration at this exact point. And so we need to read up from six and mark that onto our graph. There is our point at six seconds. In order to find an estimate, we're going to need a tangent. And so all we're going to do is draw a line in that is going to touch just onto that point like that. And again, now create a triangle which is as large as possible. I think that's about as big as I can make it. And then we need to find out all of the information we can. So what is the change in velocity? Well, the change in velocity, we go from 21 to 57. So 21 to 57. That is going to be a change of 36 meters per second. And in terms of time, well, we've gone from zero up to nine. So that is nine seconds. And actually that's worked out very nicely because we're going to do 36 divided by nine and 36 divided by nine will be four meters per second squared. So at that point it was accelerating at four meters per second squared.